Let me show you how to use the wind power formula from the energy and climate change chapter. Um, here's some pictures of wind turbines. Uh, this is where the generator is in there. Um, and these things actually can point themselves toward the wind. My, my daughter and I went, I went hiking in the Strawberry Mountains and we came out of the gorge and went through um, uh, Eastern Oregon. And these things are just everywhere out there. Um, and it, it was very surreal to have the sun rising and these things spinning in the, in the light, casting these really long shadows. Here's a picture of some out at the out in the ocean. The idea is you put them out of sight of land, um, but they, you know, it's like you got a. It's a pretty long way down to the the floor there, the ocean floor. Here's the formula for it. Um, it's, you probably want to write that down. Um, and let me just derive that. It's actually pretty simple. If you imagine that you've got a a wind turbine with some frontal area here, right? <clears throat> that frontal area is being hit by a chunk of air. We'll just draw a picture of that air. It's being hit by some chunk of air. And that air has uh, a length x. It's got some frontal area A, the same area that we're talking about up there. Uh, the mass of that chunk of air is equal to uh, the density of the air times the volume, which is, of course, the area of this times the length of that, because it's a right circular cylinder. So area times x, right? And then the power is going to be the energy divided by time, so kinetic energy divided by time. So it's going to be 1 half mv squared divided by the time, which is going to be 1 half times, and then the mass is the density times the volume times v squared, right? divided by the time that it takes for this chunk to go through the, the turbine. And of course, if you recognize this, the length of that chunk of air divided by time, that's just another velocity. So this is 1 half rho area velocity times velocity squared. And that's why it's this, right? Uh, let me work through this, this problem here. Oh, and the other thing to keep in mind is this is the maximum power possible. Most wind generators, I, I just looked at one site, they're about 30% efficient, which is still pretty amazing considering that those blades don't really take up that much of that area, right? So 30% is, is a pretty amazing efficiency in my opinion for this, right? Okay, so what maximum power, I'm just going to plug the numbers in here. I've got, it's in the drawer there. Oh, he's not talking to me. Okay, power is going to be one half times the area is going to be pi, let's see, it's 8.2 meters long, so pi times 8.2 squared. Um, and then the density is 1.2, and then the velocity is 5.4 squared like that. Oops, that's to the third, right? You can't forget that, right? This is really pretty amazing, right? If you, if you double your wind speed, you actually multiply the available power by a factor of 8. Okay, so 0.5 times pi times 8.2 squared times 1.2 times 5.4 uh, raised to the third. And I get 19957.68 watts, right? Uh, so let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1.9957 times 10 to the fourth watts, which with two sig figs, you'd have to say that. These aren't very hard, are they? Just remember that functionality there, right? That it's, that it's, that it's velocity raised to the third power. 